This little video uh, is about how to scale an equation, which is another way of saying, how do you make an equation non-dimensional? So when we scale an equation, what we want to do is make it unitless. We want to get rid of the units um, so that it becomes um, an equation that we can use with a lot of different variables uh, and even different uh, systems of measurement without resolving the equation. Um, so we solve that once and then we're able to use that solved equation, that solved uh, dimensionless equation uh, in multiple different situations. So you might look at this setup over here. Let's say we're trying to solve a pipe flow problem where we were trying to add energy to our, uh, to our fluid here by heating up the pipe. So we have a hot pipe and we have a fluid going through the middle of our pipe uh, and we have a diameter of the pipe. If we scale that equation uh, and use these values up here, you see these star values, that tells us that that's a dimensionless quantity. So theta is our dimensionless, dimensionless temperature uh, and so on. And our uh, velocity here is dimensionless too. If we solve that with those values, we can then use uh, that equation, that scaled equation to convert our various temperatures uh, and uh, lengths and any variable that that matters in that equation to a um, equation with units in it. And so once we have solved this guy up here, um, we can just use some substitution and that means we've solved this a problem here with really hot pipe and we've solved this problem here with a pipe that's in Celsius and this pipe here uh, that has a cooler temperature that's in Fahrenheit, uh, all of those would be just a matter of simply substituting uh, some values in to get our solution. Uh, so that is why this would be uh, something worth doing. And we'll see how that works in practice too. So if that's a little confusing, um, we'll, we'll get to that. All right, so to scale, uh, we replace each of the variables in our initial equation, in our dimensioned equation, uh, in, by a unitless value, by dividing uh, those values by a characteristic value, uh, values for length or time or temperature that are appropriate uh, to a particular problem. So let's take our pipe flow problem here. We might say, okay, instead of having an equation with x, I want a dimensionless x star. So I'm going to divide every length in my problem uh, by the length L. And you might ask, well, what is that length L there? Uh, and in a pipe flow problem, it's probably going to be your radius. That would be a good place to start. Uh, some kind of uh, length in the problem that seems um, to describe the length scale, the general scale uh, in that particular dimension uh, for that problem. Uh, and we would then, every length, we wouldn't use a separate L for Y we would divide the same L, so this would be the radius here too, and we divide all our Y values by that and get a Y star. Uh, similarly, we can do the same thing with velocity and temperature. Uh, so here we've divided our velocity, uh, any velocity uh, value in our problem by fr the free stream velocity, the, the, the velocity at the middle of our pipe, uh, and that gives us um, values of u star that are going to range from 0 to 1, right? Because this value will range from u all the way up to u infinity. Uh, and so these will all be 0 to 1. Uh, these would all be 0 to 1. These might not, but it might not matter in this problem uh, because we're not that concerned about what's going on in the x direction. We'll be interested in what's going on in the y direction there. Uh, and this one here, theta star, our dimensionless temperature, is a different kind of uh, scaling. We again want to go from zero to one, but we're not starting at a zero, right? Right. A low value of u would be zero, zero velocity. Um, here, we're going to scale from um, this, the sort of scale of temperatures in the problem from T hot to T cold, essentially. Uh, and then this value, we're going to subtract that uh, T cold from. 
I have T final and T initial here, but it's essentially the same thing. But what does that do? Well, it means that any temperature in the problem, again, is going to, is going to go from zero to one. Okay. And that's valuable because it allows us, uh, it makes the problem uh, sensible. It's a little easier to understand what's happening. If I have a temperature near one, I know that's a hot area of my, uh, of my temperature field. If my velocity is near one, uh, I know that's a particularly fast part of the, of the field. Okay, so once we have unitless values, we can sub them into our governing equation and whatever equation we're trying to solve. Um, so we're going to do that for the conservation of mass here, which is the first of those four uh, equations that we just saw in, in our notebook. Um, and we're going to end up with a scaled term for each of them. So we know from that previous equation, we defined x star as x over L. So x is going to be x star times L, just a little algebra. So we're going to take this equation here, and every time we have a dimensioned value, u or v or y or x, we're going to sub in our uh, dimensionless value. So the first step is sub in those scaled values. So for x, I'm putting in x star l here. For y, I'm putting in y star times l. Uh, for u, I'm putting in u star times uh, u infinity. Now these are derivatives, right? Um, so because they're about change, we know these constants aren't changing. So we can pull those constants outside of our derivative. Okay, so u infinity and L are both constants. Those characteristic values are, are going to stay the same for the whole problem. So we pull those guys out of here. And in this case, it works really nice because we've got a zero over here. And so we can just do some re uh, rearrangement algebraically. We're just going to divide both sides by u infinity uh, and multiply both sides by L. So we get rid of those constants and we have a nice simplified equation um, for the conservation of mass. Now, is it always going to be that straightforward where everything just disappears? No, and that's actually why it's, it's useful. This is not telling us very much about the nature of the conservation of mass here. Um, but when we take a more complex equation, like the momentum equation or the energy equations, we'll find that it, this scaling process gives us um, some interesting non-dimensional coefficients. And that's a little introduction to scaling.